Welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show, a podcast brought to you by the Livingston Parish News. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. And this is going to be the last time I tell you guys, but group therapy is no more. We have separated our shows. Of course, we have Around Livingston with David Gray. And now we are sitting here with the man I'm going to let him introduce himself. This is from the Cheap Seats, named after his aptly and appropriately named uh, column. Uh, so go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Hey, this is Rob DeArmond. I'm the sports editor of the Livingston Parish News. And so today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be wrapping up spring and uh, summer sports, and probably next week we'll be, going to be talking a lot about football. Uh, but for today, we've got some college baseball slash athlete news, but first and foremost, let's recognize these ladies on the all pair softball team. We've kind of been pushing that off a little bit uh, as we wrap up some other stuff, so let's go ahead and get into that. Just going to uh, focus on the, the major award winners that we had this year for the, the All-Pairs team. Uh, Laney Bailey from Walker was a repeat uh, All-Pairs MVP. Uh, she had just a, a phenomenal season all the way around. She was 29-5, and five, uh, 1.24 ERA, and two, 250 strikeouts as a pitcher in the circle. It was it was kind of funny when you, you talked to her. I was like, you know, Laney, you, you know, you, you did it again. And I remember when she won it last year, you know, that was the uh, – the thing when I entered ended the interview with her was like, well, I guess, you, you know, you got to kind of shoot for this again. And, you know, I said, well, you did it. And she was kind of like, yeah, you know, she was, you know, she said, it's a, it's a big deal, but you know, I, I'm not really much on awards and everything. So it was kind of, you know, she said, I'd rather have the, the team success. And, you know, when I talked to coach, uh, Hallie Westmoreland, she just kind of said the same thing. She's like, she's just humble, just so humble in the whole thing and, and accepting of it. And, you know, uh, Part of it was uh, you, you talked to her just kind of about the approach, and she just kind of felt like, you know, as a, as a senior, they had a really good senior group, uh, which really helped them along. But she said part of the deal was kind of, uh, uh, you know, holding teammates accountable, holding herself accountable and things like that And that from a leadership standpoint. And you could kind of see that stuff come come through on the field when they, when they went out, you know. Uh, uh, she also said she had a, a really uh, – developed a really close bond with her catcher, uh, Elena Dagrapont, uh, which she said it, it kind of grew over over their time and it kind of helped them, you know, uh, establish a great relationship that they carried over as well. Um, it's, it's one of those things. Um, you look at Laney at the plate, when you talk about the, your MVP, it's going to be, you know, that, that well-rounded player and, and Taylor Douglas at Holden also had a great season. And I think it, it came down between those two and I think, you know, you put it up and that's when, you know, my eyes went up. I was like, okay, this is going to be the fun part of the meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where it gets fun. But she, uh, 451, 22 home runs and 54 RBIs. Um, so, and I kind of joked with her. I said, I think every game that I've covered for you guys this year, you've hit at least one home run. So, and that's when she said, I need to cover more Walker games. So, uh, you know, but uh, that was just one of those. They, I said the the approach at the plate. She said I I don't go up looking to to hit them. It's just one of those things where. Uh, but she also said being a pitcher kind of helps when you go up because you kind of know the zone. You know what's what's coming, and you just look for your pitch. But uh, um, she said a lot of those they weren't you know that first at bat. It was that second at bat or that third at bat where you get a chance to look and see what the other pitcher's doing as well. So um, it's just one of those deals that you know. I just, you know, I, I I said, look back on your career if you could. She's like, that that's kind of tough, but, you know, we, we get to the semis, and then I don't think we've uh, – that's a lot to accomplish, and, and I don't think we've got anything to uh, to kind of hang our heads about, you know. Sure. sure. She'll be going to Southeastern as well, so uh, she, she's got that lined up. So uh, they'll be there. So, uh, you know, I, I told them I, I need to get over there and kind of see. We've got uh, her and uh, Elise Jones from Doyle is over there as well, so – so a lot of a uh, lot of lady lions uh, are a lot of former Livingston Parish uh, ladies becoming lady lions. So congratulations to them. Uh, so that was MVP, uh, who, coach of the year. Uh, yeah. I, also, uh, Taylor Douglas wound up being the offensive MVP. Uh, ah. That was a repeat for her. And then Chloe McGee from Live Oak was a defensive MVP. Um, with the coach of the year, we wound up uh, with co-head coaches. We had uh, Coach Westmoreland at Walker and uh, Raven Andrews at Holden. Uh, that was one of those things where 
cast the vote, you count them out. And it was like, we got a tie, you know, it was like, okay, do we want to revote? And just kind of looked, it was like, okay, they, you know, just let it lie. And that's how we kind of went with it. Um, uh, it, it, it kind of a different deal for both of them uh, for coach Andrews. It was her first, it's her first head coaching job, you know, uh, and it's one of those deals where you come in and you know what the expectations are, you know, but she also said that, you know, she kind of felt like if the girls could give her the same effort that they gave every time, there would be no problems. Uh, and, and they went through their share of things, uh, revamped the, the coaching staff completely, uh, had a lot of players change positions and things like that during the, during the course of the, the season, but they were able to kind of, you know, like I said, you, 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 the more you change it, the more it stays the same, you know, they wind up in the same, same boat they always are. And, you know, she knows that, that going into next year, that's, you know, that's the goal. They had no seniors this year. All these, all of these, uh, players who have seemingly been here forever, you know, a lot of them start them starting since they were in seventh grade, uh, they're, they're coming back, you know? So, uh, she knows she's already got it, uh, it, not to work cut out, but you know the expectation, and it's the same deal. I, I you know, I remember going in that that first playoff game that they had, and uh, you know, I was getting the getting the lineup from her, and you know, I was kind of looked, and I was like, "Yeah, okay." She goes, "I'm I'm a little nervous. This is my first uh, playoff game at at, at at any level." Uh, but she also gave credit to the team when we talked about it. She said, "I noticed that when we got to the playoffs, that intensity kind of ratcheted up a little bit." Uh, and for them, I think that's a result of being there uh, in that situation, in those kinds of situations. You know, they get into the semifinals and they're they're trailing uh, in that semifinal game and they come back and win, which is, I, I think at the time, I think we talked about it. You know, I kind of asked them, I was like, do you guys ever remember, you know, the, the players I talked to after that game, you know, do you guys ever remember trailing while, uh, while you're in Sulphur? And I, we all just kind of looked around and it's kind of like, I, I don't remember that happening, you know, uh, but give them credit. They worked through it. They're, they also trailed in that championship game. The Anacoco uh, gave up a lead off home run. Uh, Taylor was pitching, gave up a lead off home run. They come back and win that game uh, 10 to six. And, you know, uh, it's, it's like coach Andrew said, she, they know the expectations and, and they, they know uh, kind of, you don't want to say a target, but it's the the targets on their back. They know, you know, they 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 got to go shoot for six now, right? So you know, <laughs> not not an easy feat. <laughs> it's it's just one of those deals. It's uh, I I get they they won it every since I've been here, and not to put it on me, but it's like every year since I've been here, they won a state championship, and you you're know, the mascot. You, you had you you had twenty twenty two. That was you know, uh, that was the year another year that that they could have uh had one too um with coach Westmoreland it was a little bit different with her team um they go 28 and 4 uh like I said I, I mentioned that group of seniors that kind of established some things for her uh as to what the goals were heading into the season it was kind of you know hey we just wanted to go out uh focus on the little things and have fun I think is what she said uh when I talked to her uh and what kind of get gets lost in in theirs is uh they go on a 23 game win streak. They lost um to Santa Ma three times during the season, which is kind of the uh the deal for them uh you know, but you've got two great teams. All all three of those games were really good games. And of course they wind up meeting each other in the semifinals. Uh they lose Walker loses that game 6 to nothing uh if I remember correctly and uh it was just a, some things that, you know, didn't materialize for them that had during the regular season. They get the they get the pitching and the home runs, and, and none of that kind of came together. They also made a few errors. And, and you know, uh, when I talked to Coach Westmoreland about those games that they lost, it was just, uh, you know, uncharacteristic things would happen to them. Uh, and, and that's just one of those things they've got to uh, – you know, you learn how to work through. But like I said, uh, it's the same thing when I, when I talk to Laney, you, you – you can't, uh, you have a season like you do and, and you can't, uh, look back on it and be, you know, upset about it, you know, uh, cause she, you know, like she said, she said, yeah, I, 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 you know, directed traffic, but that was all on them. Everything that we accomplished, that was all, uh, the, the players, uh, making it happen. And, you know, she said that those, you have those memories and, and to get to the semifinals, they, they you know, they can't take that away from you. You know, yeah. you, 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 you did it, you accomplished it. And it's a, you know, a great accomplishment for that team. Okay. So, uh, why, why don't we round out the first team? 
real quick. Uh, I, I, I didn't, you didn't write bring, it down. Yep, didn't write it down. Okay. Uh, it was one of those deals. Um, okay. Well, uh, obviously, you can look in this week's print edition. That would be the July 28th edition, or you can find it online. Yes, uh Moving on to the last piece, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, Preston Faulkner uh, at Southeastern. And he was, at, uh, I believe he was Southeastern's uh, Athlete of the Year. Male Athlete of the Year. That's, uh, like I said, we, we talked about it last year or last week, and he just had a, a phenomenal season, kind of turned it on in the tournament and ones up being the tournament MVP and, and uh, parlayed that into a, uh, I guess, a, a, an honor here being named the uh, Southeastern Male Athlete of the Year that came out, uh, I believe it was uh, Monday evening, I think, as we were. Putting the putting the finish, finishing touches on the print edition this week, so that's just another honor you you kind of add to the uh, to the stable there for him. Sure, especially after uh, he was snubbed, I believe, as uh, Southland Conference Player of the Year. Player of the Year, right? That's that's one of the when I talked to him a couple of weeks ago, it's kind of like uh, kind of a little motivation there, and he said, "Yeah, I'd, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't," you know. So I kind of went into the tournament a uh, little bit of chip on the shoulder, and, and it made it pay off. It's you know, it, it was. One of those things where if you're watching that tournament, every time he comes up to bat, you're you know there's usually people on base, and you're kind of like, okay, do you pitch to him or do you just uh, kind of let it ride here? But most of the time they pitch to him, and sometimes they wound up paying for it. Yeah, yes, they did. Uh, so, Mister uh, Mister Rob, if you'll introduce yourself as we head on out. Hey, this is Rob DeArmond, sports editor with the Livingston Parish News, and my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the News. Appreciate you guys out there joining us for. This is uh, from the Cheap Seats, where we discuss sports and what's going on in Livingston Parish. We have finally wrapped up the spring and summer sports, so we're going to be moving into football starting next week. And of course, school starts next week as well. The uh, football, uh, looked it up, the, the first workouts don't start until the 8th. Okay. The, so we, we'll, so have a, we'll have a week here where uh, kind of one more week to kind of pick it up, and then uh, Monday, that following Monday on the 8th, everything will kind of crank up in terms of uh, fall sports. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Sure. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you taking the time today. And thank again, thank you all out there for joining us. Please remember the news is on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays. That's $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. One last time, we appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you next time.